plenty of stuff. This is all going to get sorted out, put into a heap in the middle of the floor here. But you can see what I'm taking on TGO Challenge with me, and hopefully it will help some of you out with um, with packing for your own backpacking um, trips, maybe even the TGO Challenge. Um, so here goes. Cooking kit. Uh, now I'm still not decided as to whether I'm going to take the GoPro. GoPro, that's a GoPro. Jet oil or just this stove kit. Um, that's my water purifying kit. So we've got a um, two litre rollable platypus flat pack bottle and a similar one from Sawyer uh, but smaller for the filtering. We've got a um, tube and a Sawyer filter itself. That's a water filter. It's going to keep your water clean. I actually don't tend to use it very much unless there's um, no running water nearby or I can't pick up any um, what I would consider to be safe water. Uh, get slated for that I'm sure um, because there's a ton of people out there that say that you should always filter and boil water and uh, so on and so forth. Um, in the highlands I don't tend to do it um, unless I'm in any doubt about the water. Uh, don't use that as endorsement for you to go out there and do it because it ain't always wise. Um, okay, so that's that. The um, the kit I've got is GSI Outdoors aluminium pot here. Uh, it's been used for loads of stuff, burning on fires and everything. Dead strong. Little pot cosy that comes with it. Um, there we go. And a fitted lid that goes on top of it as well. So that's just the pot I'm going to use. Uh, it's quite light, not mega light, but uh, it's light enough. Uh, that's the jet boil pot stand. Uh, sorry, the canister stand and it clips on the bottom of the canister, stops it from uh, wobbling about, and that goes in the bottom of the, uh, the pot itself with the uh, little silicon rubber, um, I don't know what you call it, oven glove, I guess, stops your fingers from getting burnies on the, uh, on the pot. Okay, so and then the gas canister goes on top of that. Uh, I've got an out kit, uh, cracker, 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 something, cracker, I think it's a cracker, stove, cracking, little tiny stove from um, out kit. It says it's titanium, it's very lightweight, uh, and it's got a good raw to it. So um, you usually take that if I'm not taking the jet boil. Uh, and to go alongside the backup stove, we've got something very similar, very cheap. Uh, it's a, um, a BRS 3000T, very similar stove, slightly different um, gas vent at the top, but essentially a very similar stove, goes in a little bag. That's just a backup, so um, probably won't use that much if at all. Uh, that's that. Uh, whoops, that goes on the bottom there, it's got a little magnet on it. Uh, that came with the GSI Outdoors pot, by the way. Um, so that all fits in there nicely. Over on top of there, uh, we've got a um, Sea to Summit long handled spoon, uh, a load of coffee, and a lighter. And that's it, that's the stove kit, the brew kit, if you like. That all goes in there. Uh, it's a 100 gram canister that I use. And that usually will see me across to um, drop it or somewhere like that that's halfway, so maybe say it's halfway, that's less than halfway, isn't it? Four or five days in. Um, all in a little roll top waterproof bag, just to keep all the contents dry. So that's the stove, that goes there. Uh, I've got a pot handle, which I don't use, uh, and I've got a, another base, which is a metal one, it's more heavyweight, and that's a base for the, um, the gas canister as well, makes it all dead sturdy. There's stuff like that that's actually really useful, and it's worth the weight. Uh, my plastic one, way lighter. So that goes over there. Um, what else have we got? Um, yeah, windshield. Probably won't use a windshield. Um, I'll tend to arrange, although it is very light, it's an outkit windshield. I probably won't chuck that in uh, at all. Um, I'll just arrange stuff around the uh, the stove or cook inside the, the tent 
well ventilated though, but I will cook inside the tent. Uh, porch. Um, uh, tent, obviously. What did I just drop there? I dropped something. Anyway, wherever it is. Tent, that's a tarp tent, Scarp 2. Uh, great lightweight weight tent. It's a bit on the pricey side, although not by today's standards. It tends to get really, really expensive. Uh, but that weighs about 1.6 kilos. Something like that, I don't know. Um, trekking poles. Here they are. Fizan Compact Ultralight. Says the world's lightest. 158 grams each. And I'll wrap a bunch of um, duct tape, gaffer tape, around the top of there. Uh, loads of it. So that if I ever need tape, I use it off of the poles. Um, I don't have to carry a separate roll. I've always got them handy as well. Uh, they, they are telescopic poles. They go to about 125, 130, 135 maybe um, centimetres. Good enough for some shelters to put uh, to um, prop up some shelters actually. So, but they're really lightweight. Um, they don't pack up so small. Some of them pack up small now, but they, they are pretty good poles. Uh, I swear by them. I've used uh, used them for years. Um, I've got a bivy bag here. This is an Outkit hunker. I like my Outkit gear. It's a hunker. It's not the hunker XL, so it's fairly narrow, um, but it keeps your sleeping bag dry. Um, unless you're a sweaty bugger, and then the, the um, sweat will condensate on the inside. So just be mindful of that if you're using a down sleeping bag. Uh, sleeping bag. This goes back ages, actually not a sleeping bag at all, it's a quilt, you'll, you'll um, know if you look on the um, FYA Basics um, archive there's a piece on there about sleeping bags and why you don't actually need to use one. Um, this is a this is a, a, an ultralight quilt, it doesn't have a back to it because you mostly compress the, um, the insulation when you're sleeping on the um, on top of it, so I use a quilt and I have that um, that accompanied with a sleeping mat. You see it somewhere, I promise. Uh, Neo Air, is it an ultralight? No, just a standard Neo Air mat from Thermarest. It's quite small quite lightweight, it's not the lightest you can buy at the moment, but then, you know, it's just, you can get them much, much lighter if you spend lots more money on them. I've had this for five years now, something like that, maybe a bit less. Anyway, quite a while. It's great, it's comfortable, um, it's a little, um, what's the word, a little unstable, but I've, I've always slept well on it. I uh, really love it. There are tons of those about, and we'll perhaps do another another piece on um, on sleeping mats because I have used quite a few other ones as well in the past. Um, down jacket for insulation. Uh, I won this little baby. It's a PhD Yukon jacket, and um, they go for loads of money. And I managed to, look, to win it in a um, in a competition on Twitter back in the early days of PhD. Um, shame to see. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson passing away recently, um, but hopefully he's left a legacy of fabulous mountain gear. Really, really expensive mountain gear, but you get what you pay for. It's really good stuff, um, typically, anyway. So, oh look, TGO Challenge patch where I burnt a hole in the sleeve. Um, what have we got here? Uh, that's just a bag with um, long, long sleeve face layer and trousers on it, in it, to keep you warm, and that stays dry inside a plastic bag there. Um, don't need that. Uh, we'll need those. Don't need that. Um, gloves. Oops, I need, um, don't I? Realise that. <coughs> what we got here? We've got a mountain equipment balaclava. Very, very, very warm indeed. We've got a low alpine, low alpine mountain cap. Uh, that's Gore-Tex, don't need a waterproof one necessarily, but I, I do like it. Um, it's very good for keeping the wind off. And a pair of Marmot um, gloves, which I use um, a pair of Kalenji running gloves underneath, just to keep an extra layer of warmth and to make it easy to get them on and off as well. Um, so that's my warm headgear. Also carry a um, little um, 
little fleece cap here and that goes all tightly inside one bag what I should do is put it in a bigger bag <laughs> and it's easier to get in but um, I guess I must be a tent manufacturer at heart so I'm going to put it all in a tiny little bag here um, just to compact it down because that goes in the top of my rucksack and I'll show you where that goes soon Okay, that's up there. Little drawstring out kit bag that's waterproof fabric, but not a waterproof bag, but it's going to be in there quite regularly. Sleeping bag liner, um, always take one, never use it. Uh, I guess some of you guys might do, but I've never used it. But it's going to go in because that seems like tradition these days. Uh, that's a food bag, I won't go through the food just now, but that's just a uh, um, enough for two days there, um, for the weighs 750, 800 grams, um, goes on in addition to my snacks as well. What else have we got? Food trowel and additional steak, that goes in, gives me an additional steak if I ever need it, but also doubles up as a trowel to dig a hole to put your poo in. Very, very handy. The, if you Google it, there's a load of um, videos on YouTube about how to use this or how to make one of these. Um, essentially, it's a bit of um, closed cell foam pad wrapped with gaffer tape around the handle uh, with a piece of string glued into it and with a clip on the end of it. That's, it is as simple as that. Um, the method is a little bit more complicated, but you, know, you can probably make it up yourself. That's really useful. I'll say, keep that clipped on the outside of my bag. That's a tennis ball for the dog. First aid kit, not a massive amount in there. Um, people will frown at this, perhaps. Lots of plasters, a couple of bandages, um, blister plasters as well. Some paper clips, uh, I always call them paper clips, safety pins. Oh. Alright, bud. Sit. Good boy, thanks, kid. Good boy. You helping me pack? Um, also keep a little bit little top of Vaseline in the top of there so I know where it is. Um, if I get any chafing or anything like that, I can just apply that on there. But list plasters are probably the one things that I'm going to get, are going to get used um, more than anything else. Hopefully, and um, just cut myself uh, or something like that. Or need to sling my arm up. This is my wash bag, and it's the wash my entire wash bag with the exception of deodorant. Uh, there's a tiny, tiny little towel that's perfectly enough, believe it or not, for a a whole man or a whole woman to um, to get themselves dry. We've got a toothbrush in there, a little compact um, acrylic mirror. We've got uh, some insect repellent, some tea tree oil, some toothpaste. We've got tick remover, uh, and I use this tick remover. It's a tweezer with a hook on the end. I don't know if you can see that, but it is uh, a really, really brilliant tick remover tool. I think it's Life Venture. Uh, it doesn't say it on it, but I think it is. Absolutely fabulous bit of kit, that is. Works a treat. And that is it, that's my, my wash bag. All I need is just to add water. Wash bag. A couple of foil blankets go in the top of the pack. A uh, selection of batteries here. I won't bother with those, but they're batteries for the various things I'm taking. Mainly the head torch. Uh, Dash, you're in the way, mate. A midgy head net. I'll keep that in the little stove. Uh, the Kraku, there we go, the Kraku stove kit. Um, stove bag, that's what that is. And I keep my little midgy head net in there. Uh, got a little light there. That hangs up in the tent. And on that, I clip my front door key. So I know I've always got it with me. Uh, again, a selection of batteries, earplugs, earplugs. Uh, you can use it to drown out the cuckoo sound or the person who is snoring next to you in their neighbouring tent. I always take a small knife with me. This is a little knife that a pal of mine made out of skateboard um, remnants. It's a really cool little knife, actually. If you can see that there. Very, very small blade. I only ever need a small blade. 
for making small cuts. I'm not in need of a Rambo situation there. In there, a pack of playing cards and a game of Pass the Pigs and a little scoring pad. Pass the Knights away, you can play, uh, do all sorts of stuff there. You can even play Pass the Pigs with yourself. Uh, don't need those maps. That's North Norfolk Coastal Path. In here, I've got um, Kitchen Roll in collections of three, which I use as, uh, as loo roll. I find it's the best sort of uh, loo roll to use when in, when in the wild. Um, and I'll do a section on how to dispose of poo in another podcast. But that's my loo roll bag, and that stays in the top of my pack as well. Uh, hand warmers. This is a new one to me, but I've chucked a couple of hand warmers in there just in case things get a little bit cold. They last for ages. Um, I mean, realistically, about five hours. But they say they get 10 hours of heat. Brilliant, there's two of those in there. And uh, yeah, just to give you a bit of warming up if you ever get super cold. Uh, I keep the tent pegs outside of my tent. I don't know why I do it exactly. I do need to have one outside my tent because then I can test the ground where I'm going to pitch. Um, but I don't. I don't know why I keep them all out, I just do. They go in the top of my rucksack, uh, in the top pouch, and I'll show you how I'm packing it later. Uh, a couple of gels there, just as pick-me-ups. I mean, I, I use them for running, but I'm going to try them this year, see what they're like. Um, snacks, loads and loads of these snacky bars, which are quite like for munching going along, and also a good emergency ration. Uh, tons of calories in those. And they taste nice too. So I'll go in one bag there. And again, most of those go in the top of my rucksack or in my front pouch, which I'll come to later. Compass. Uh, and a whistle. Not a lot to say about that, apart from it's a silver Expedition 4 compass. That's that one there. What have we got here? Chewing gum. That goes in the top of my pack as well. Love a bit of chewing gum. That goes in my repair kit. That's a uh, Sharpie pen, and I keep another pen, uh, which I don't know where it is actually, I keep another pen in my um, in my top, a ballpoint pen in the top of my rucksack too. I actually keep a little strip of, um, a long strip of shock cord, which I've twisted into uh, one of those packable um, washing lines. You can actually put your socks through the little twists in here, I don't know if you can see that, when you hang it out tight. And you can hang stuff on it without pegs. Really useful way to sod all, and you can get your stuff dry when you're walking a long distance. Um, anyway, yeah, that's what that is. So that will go in with my uh, repair kit. Rubbish. A couple of spongy pads. I use that to mop the worst off the tent in the morning, wring it out, and then the tent goes away more or less dry. Unless it's pouring down the drain, then I'll just give it a shake and put it away. Uh, but that goes in the top of the rucksack. Uh, waterproof rucksack cover. Stops the worst of the rain getting in the pack, but whenever I um, pack my bag, any of this stuff which needs um, to keep dry, like the down bag and the sleeping bag and stuff like that, goes inside a waterproof pack liner, or a waterproof bag inside the pack. Uh, once again, I'll show you how to pack that in a second, or how I pack it, not how to pack it. There's a bunch of spare, um, spare pegs here. These are the pegs that come with uh, some of the lightweight uh, tents, absolutely useless, but they're quite good for picking out ground sheets and stuff like that. So you can you actually chuck those in, a, uh, in your bag just to keep things um, keep things weighing down, and they weigh nothing. But uh, I won't be taking up all those today. Sorry, um, on this year on the TGO challenge. So they're going to go over there. Uh, spare mirror there. Don't need that. Spare tin of gas. Uh, I might. I always have one of those last minute things where I, I put in two canisters of gas at the last minute. We're not taking gas up with us, we're buying it in Inverness because we're flying up to Inverness. Uh, and we need to get the gas separately. Waterproof trousers. Uh, they're a pair of Gore Tex pack lights that I've had for years, I keep the worst off. And The, uh, the good old faithful mountain equipment jacket, uh, which was my dad's. He gave it, well, he didn't give it to me. Uh, when he died a couple of years ago, um, I wanted to keep that, uh, obviously, because uh, it means quite a lot to me. 
So I'm really looking forward to uh, to sort of thinking about my dad when I'm walking along the uh, along the trail uh, in Scotland. I'm getting quite emotional about that now. But yeah, love that jacket. I've got a red Changabang jacket and a, and a um, Paramo jacket that uh, that I do use occasionally. I think uh, that's. <laughs> I always come back to that one now. Uh, right, anything else? There's an open L knife, I'm not going to use that. Okay, that in there. Salt and pepper shaker, should have gone in with the food. Which was here somewhere. That's just a cool little salt and pepper shaker there. Hey ho! Hi. Just doing a video about the stuff I'm putting in the um, TGO Challenge pack. You alright? Are you rolling? Yeah, it's rolling, yeah. Rolling, get her. Uh, a ton of buffs. I'm gonna use hey. one, no, two. That's mine. Three buffs. Hope you can take your pick out of those. I, I can't get enough buffs. I've got a British Wildlife Tower. I'm probably gonna order <laughs> order myself um, from the suppliers a Find Your Adventure buff as well. This one. Um, well, you on that one? Yeah, you can use that one. That's fine. Um, right. There, oh, yeah. Those two you keep. Those are gonna go in here and. In my clothes, I've got a windproof, windproof jacket, windproof trousers, and actually they double when um, you go into the laundry in a campsite and you clean your trousers and everything else that you've got dirty. You can just wear these. No one knows that you're wearing nothing. Wait, underneath them. isn't Why? this Mum's charger? No, that's not. That's one of my ones. You stole Mum's charger. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that goes in there. As a, as a spare change of clothes, underwear, it's mine. Yours, yeah, um, pair of socks, underwear, so that's um, two pairs of pants there, a spare pair of really lightweight trousers, uh, a spare long base layer and a uh, short sleeve base layer, t shirts they are, and the piece de la resistance, which is my yak hair hat, Hang on. which comes from, I think, in Nepal. Not yak hair. Yeah, Nepal. Not yak hair. Yeah, it's made from yak wool. Uh, it's made by a company called Black Yak. Love it. I really love this. I bought this for Linda, <laughs> uh, my wife, and she, uh, she never, never uses it. Exactly. She never ever uses it. So that's going to go uh, in the clothes pouch. I've uh, got a spare zippy bag there as well, um, which I don't really know why I've got it there, but I, I do like to have a couple of spare bags. <coughs> oh, bless you, honey. Thank All right. You. Yeah. And I think that's just about it. Oh, um, oh I'll... Nice. no. Let me take these. That's, that's what about your bum bag? Bum bag. Yeah, that's going to get packed later. But um, we'll come to that as to what I'm going to keep in there. Bum bag. Uh, bum bag. There is one very important thing that I'm missing. Why do you need these? I've already explained that on the video. Hope we'll have to wash it back. But weird. Somewhere. Oh, some galaxy chocolate. Here. Ah. No, that's not it. Dad, is it okay if we oh, grab some go. galaxy? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Um, somewhere here, I had these maps, and these are all of the maps I need for the crossing. One, two, three, four, five, six in all, and I'm going to take the whole lot and carry those across with me. Some people might say I was mad for carrying all of them, um, but I carry them with my root sheet. Um, Simply because I like to have the full set of maps with me at all times. I like to browse them. The full set? Well, not all of those, no. <laughs> um, but uh, but the full set of maps that I need for the crossing. Uh, I like to refer back to them to see how far I've come. Uh, you all understand the love of the maps, don't you? Hey, what are you doing, huh? I bought meat and chocolate. Are you going to break some of that off for me? <laughs> so that's it. Uh, Weighs loads. Uh, obviously, we've got Wait, water. To go on top of that? No. Well, you, know, you try carrying that on your back for a bit. Um, yeah, uh, we've obviously got water to go on top of that, and I don't carry much water with me. Oh. Why? Well, because I can collect it on, from streams on the way through. Home. Disgusting. <laughs> She's got a lot to learn, guys, hasn't she? No. Uh, Somebody here. I'm more of a home slow macarator person. So, sorry to leave you. This is my trusty Life Venture titanium mug. Ashley uses that for tea. 
No, not this one. He doesn't. He uses my TGO challenge now, the plastic one, the green one. Oh, remember? Um, so Why I'll, is that for hot chocolate though? You might do. I don't mind. That's fine. This is this is good for anything really. But the good thing is you can actually heat using it, so you can put it on top of a stove and boil water in it. There's loads of these about on the market. They're not even very expensive anymore. You can get them in no, China if you're not worried about things like that. Very very cheap. Fifteen quid maybe tops. I don't know. Ten Bye. quid delivered. I, this was probably about twenty quid. I think, and I put a, just a little silicon wristband around the, around the top. It doesn't burn or melt when you're cooking with it, and it stops it from burning your lips when you're, um, and it's also nice and easy to pick up. And that stays clipped on the outside of my pack, around about here or maybe on the back strap, and I can just unclip it or clip it on the um, front of my waist pack here and just grab some water as I'm going along. So that's why I don't need to carry a great deal, but obviously I'll check the map on the um, on the way through. Still, but you want clean. Clean water? Yeah, I know. So you don't want just dirty? No, some of it's very, very clean up in Scotland, honey. I know. You can drink it straight out of the stream. Man, you're disgusting man. I'm a disgusting man. That's all for now. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, that's it for now. Um, I'll show you how to pack it in the next video. <laughs> I'll show you how to pack it in the next video. Catch you later, guys. Oh,